Hi, this is Dr. Burton. I'm out here making videos. Hopefully this, this is the last of them for my ethics class. And I thought about making a video about human nature and critical theory. I've been thinking about critical theory a lot lately and reading with some friends. You might have seen some of my videos uh, with others. I'm going to be doing a little series of conversations with others. Maybe not just on critical theory, but right now that happens to be the topic. But uh, I wanted to talk about human nature and critical theory. And we should think about this together. What is a human being in this view? Uh, it seems like humans are connected to uh, identity groups. Uh, humans are defined according to their social reality, their social structure. Um, sometimes we talk about uh, race or gender or uh, gender identity. But is that the heart of human nature? Let's think about it. Now, I have been trying to drive home the importance of reason as ontological, and I will keep hammering that one. Reason, the laws of thought, applies to being. The laws of thought are the laws of being. If we separate those, then we, we cannot know what is. And that's part of what's going on right now, the uh, separation of reason from being. And I have argued that this comes from Nietzsche, or he is the one that said it most clearly, that reason is a fiction created by philosophers and used to oppress. Um, I reject that idea. I don't think so. Reason is an aspect of being. Reason is an aspect of thinking, and it is what connects our thinking with our being. So we've talked about a logos in us, that we are rational beings, that we have the capacity to understand the logos in the world. And that is the order of things or the nature of things. Um, so there's a, a, a logos in us that grasps the logos in the world. Um, I hold that as uh, self-evident. If you want to argue with me, fine. But if, if you let go of reason is ontological, then you lose all meaning. And humans create meaning and humans create themselves. So this is also where we get the focus on identity. So human nature is in dispute right now in this current conversation we're having, uh, critical theory and otherwise. Human nature is in dispute. Now in my ethics class, and in logic, we talk about human nature and the complexity of human nature. And we borrow the, the starting point from Aristotle, but I think Aristotle was observing something true. He said that human beings are rational, political animals. So let's think about that. This is the heart of human nature, the essence of human nature. We are rational, we're thinking beings. Uh, I think that's self-evident that we're thinking beings. Um, if you want to question that, you're having to think about it. So we use concepts, judgments, and arguments. We are thinking things. I've given 15 talks about this in my Retrieving Reason podcast. Go check it out. Uh, I think it's also self-evident that we are social beings. So political means we live in social circles, once you're born into a family, you're in a social circle. So this is self-evident too. Humans aren't self-born and self-raised. So we're political and we're animals. We have bodies. Um, we have sensations. Uh, now Aristotle thought reason was to rule over our body and over the polis, the this, this city-state or the society we live in. So reason is essential in human nature. So we want to make a distinction between essential features of human nature and accidental features of human nature. So the essence of humans is rational political animals. That's our source of unity. That's why we can talk about a humanity. This is true of all humans. Now you're going to bring up, what about someone in a coma? Well, they have the capacity to use reason, but it's been hindered. 
physically. So they still have the capacity. They're still human. You can give me all of your red herrings. I'll take them. Um, but as soon as we leave that basic level of, of what unites us as humans, we get to less basic things. And we can talk about levels. Uh, the next level is that human beings have basic beliefs or presuppositions. Everybody has a belief about what is real, either consciously or unconsciously. We may have a fallback position. We may have inherited a tradition, but we all have a belief about what is real. Either everything is eternal in some form or another, like matter is eternal. That's the fallback position of many people in our day. It's the fallback position of many in critical theory. Or uh, maybe spirit is eternal, like idealism. Or maybe matter and spirit are co-eternal, like dualism, like Plato and Aristotle. So either all is eternal in those forms, or only some is eternal. God is eternal. So that's theism versus non-theism. That's a major division among human beings. It's the number one division among human beings. It's also the number one avoided division. We don't talk about that. And it's part of critical theory that we don't do metaphysics anymore. And maybe it's because God is dead, or maybe because of Kant separating the noumenal from the phenomenal realm. But I reject that as a uh, sleight of hand, because we do do metaphysics. We just aren't honest about it. We don't call it metaphysics. It, it's an assumed position. It's fideism. And you can have secular fideism, belief without proof. But human beings all have basic beliefs and we're divided. So this is where we have diversity. So unity at the basic level, we're rational beings, diversity among basic beliefs, among our view of human nature. So even though I claim, and I claim, I think with strong grounds, that we're all human beings and we all have this essential nature, um, we disagree over that, the very next level, because uh, our basic belief will determine our view of human nature. Okay, beyond that division, we have divisions among our personality types. Uh, human beings have, uh, and I think Socrates, Plato, Scripture recognizes this. Probably it's cross-cultural. You could see this happening. We have intellect, emotion, and will. Intellect is connected to our reason, Emotion connected to our desire, will connected to our actions. All of us have these aspects of our personality, but we tend to be dominant in one of them. So we have these personality tests. Um, some people are more ideas driven, philosophical. Some people are more emotionally driven, psychological. Some people are more practically driven, practical. And we divide over these. And really we divide over these. Um, so we have diversity. Now imagine if we could be united in that. The people, we need all three of these to make society work. We need the, the intellects. We need the, the people people. We need the doers. We need to all work together. This is what Plato's Republic was about. Uh, he talked about the, the uh, harmonious soul where we're united in those things in ourself. We have a a justice in our soul. And he talked about how society reflects those parts. And in order to have justice or harmony in society, those things need to be unified. Maybe that's the source of injustice. We lack unity. We lack harmony uh, in our basic beliefs and in our personality differences. We have different backgrounds. Remember, we're talking about essential and accidental features. So it's not uh, an essential feature that you believe all or only some is eternal. You, you believe something, but uh, that's an accidental feature of being human. And that you're uh, more emotional than intellectual, that's a accidental feature. It could have been otherwise, right? And our background factors are also accidental features. And what I'm seeing today is an emphasis on our background more than on our common rational humanity. So our background includes things like race, ethnicity, 
gender identity, um, socioeconomic background, geography, where were you born, where do you live, educational background, um, generation, birth order. This is where there's a lot of diversity, and this is where we fight. We fight over racial issues. We fight over gender identity. Um, we are currently stuck on these accidental features, and we're um, putting them forward as if they were essential features. Yes, there's racism. Yes, we need to fight it. But your race does not define you as a human being. It is an accidental quality. I used to be able to talk about this way more freely. Now it's become so contentious that you can't. I used to ask my students, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this. What if I were purple? Would you judge me? Yeah, you would, but would I still be human? Yes, I would. <sighs> okay, background factors. This is what we're dividing over. And I think critical theory is emphasizing some of these uh, non-essential features of human nature and elevating them to be the essence of human nature. And then we divide over these things and there's a power struggle. And I'm not denying the reality of power struggles. I think there really are power struggles. Um, that could be another discussion. Why are there power struggles? Are we fighting over the good? I don't think so. I think we're fighting over other things like resources, money, power, and these things aren't the good. So background is not, not our essence. Where you come from is not your essence. How much money you have is not your essence. And then we have uniqueness. I've had students argue with me that humans aren't unique. Nobody has a unique personality. I think your uniqueness is uh, something that makes you, you. It will be your unique contribution to the human project, your expression of talent. And even the students who say there is no uniqueness, they are so unique in saying that. And then we have different moods. Everybody's in a mood right now. What mood do you have? We change, right? Humans are changeable. We change in seeking the good. We can be seeking the good one moment and not seeking the good the next moment. And so that's not, our mood is not our essence either. Our mood is so changeable. Our essence is not changeable. So I want to review the levels I've given you. At the basic level, the essential nature of humans, we're rational political animals. That's our source of unity. That's where we can find commonality. And it's on that basis that we can reach common ground and have civil discourse. So we're rational um, but we have basic beliefs and we don't agree here. So we need to use our reason to discuss this difference, different basic beliefs. We have different personality types and our different personality types might incline us to not do the metaphysics. Maybe we're more into caring than thinking. I don't know. Uh, so personality types, this is difference. This is diversity. Background, much diversity. Uniqueness, diversity, mood, diversity. So we have a lot of diversity and we tend to focus on diversity, but we also have unity. We have unity and diversity. And so there is a oneness to our being and there's a multiplicity to our being. And the oneness is our, our logos. Humans have a logos and that logos is our nature. And humanity has a logos. And that's our shared nature. That's the source of unity, even though we have much diversity. And I think we can celebrate both, right? So here's a, another step. If we can know what the nature of humans is, the essence of a human being, then we can know what is good for humans. And if we can know what's good for humans, we can know what's evil for humans. And I think a lot of what's going on out there today there's a lot of discontentment. There's a lot of resentment. There's a lot of anger because we don't have the good. We don't have the good in place. We have a false view of the good. I'll just give you Aristotle's 
argument. He thinks the good for a being is based on the nature of a being. The good for humans is based on human nature. Humans are fundamentally rational beings, so it's good for humans to use their reason. And the first thing we use our reason to know is what is real and what is eternal. And we're not doing that. And ultimate reality. And that knowledge of what is real is what is the source of meaning. And humans also are meaning-seeking beings. So we tend to pursue things that don't ultimately give us meaning. And when we see other people having those things that we want, we become discontent. So if we don't have the good for humans, then we have the opposite. We'll call it evil. I know that's a touchy word these things these days, but uh, evil is the opposite. So if you're a rational being and you use your reason, you'll find meaning. If you're a rational being and you're not using reason, you won't find meaning. In fact, the less you use reason, the less meaning you will find. The more ne- meaning you need, the more things will become boring. You empty things of meaning, they become boring. And we seek to fill the boredom with something. We usually go into excess. And you can see a lot of excess in our culture today. And uh, excess just breeds more excess because we're pursuing things that are not fulfilling. And then we feel guilty about it. Why? Because we wasted our life. We wasted our time, our effort, our money, our life. And and we did it to ourselves. And that's where guilt comes in. And we don't like guilt. We don't want to feel that. And so we harden ourselves or we deceive ourselves. We think, oh, I'm okay. And we're not really okay. And then we justify ourselves. There's a lot of justification going on out there. Self-justification, um, excuses we make for not thinking. Oh, we can't think. We're not rational. They're like huge philosophical justifications for not thinking. Okay, so why am I talking about this? Well, because critical theory is offering a view of human nature and the good life. And I want to ask, is it based on an accurate view of human nature? And is it based on what is truly good for human beings? Critical theory is helpful for helping us to see some real social ills. My worry is that it will not have the tools for correcting those social ills. Only having a true picture of reality will do that. We need to know what is real, we need to know what is a human being, and we need to know what is good for human beings, and those are all connected. So we need to do philosophy, we need to do it well. And if we don't, um, I think we'll continue on this trajectory we're currently on. And uh, we can anticipate an increase in suffering, natural evil. We can anticipate an increase in toil, strife, old age, and sickness and death. These are um, means that should get us to stop and think, but often we don't, we don't stop and think. So suffering should get us to stop and think about our view of the good. All right, so that's my little talk about human nature and critical theory. Um, Again, I think critical theory is offering some legitimate criticisms we should pay attention to, but I'm not sure it's going to give us a solid foundation upon which to rebuild and correct those errors it's pointing out. All right, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.